Hello, everyone, and welcome back to episode of the month. This is where at the end of every month or beginning of every month, depending on when it comes out, we look back at the month that was and talk about the best episode of television to come out that month and August of 2022. What an interesting month. A lot of stuff premiered that I think was genuinely good, but there's one episode I have to talk about because I think it sets a great precedent for stuff going forward that I'm genuinely interested in. I have never put a Netflix episode on this show before because I don't watch Netflix often, but The Sandman came out. They had a lot of great episodes. I would have done episode six, which is the episode all about death, but instead I decided to go with episode 11, the bonus episode, Dream of a Thousand Cats and Calliope. And the reason I wanted to talk about this episode in particular, because it does something I am waiting for other comic book properties to pick up on. Sometimes they do it, sometimes they don't. But Neil Gaiman wrote a really complex story with multiple layers, with multiple issues that span an incredible time frame. They focus on large stories, on small stories. It's kind of hit and miss everywhere all over the place. When you have that many issues, you should pinpoint some moments that you know are important to hit upon and talk about that don't play an overarching theme of the story and give that a specific moment that is worth mentioning. That is what this episode did. It took two short stories from the actual Sandman mythos and it said, we're going to give them to you in a simplistic story, a bonus template just to enjoy. I really like that because some of these shows, some types of these shows feel the need to overextend their story. Maybe they think a theme is really cool from a book that becomes the whole season. Maybe they pick one arc of the book and that becomes the whole season. What the Sandman has done beautifully and executed almost perfectly was recapturing the magic of a single issue on television. It didn't extend the story. It didn't like this is a two hour movie just based on this arc. It was simple and easy. And that is what this, this episode did. These are two stories that don't warrant more time than is given to them. They are important stories. They are cool stories. They are fun to read and look at. I think more comic books should try to do this. You have a single issue that is worth talking about and looking at. Do that issue, but don't make it your big story. You don't have to. There's certain key issues of an event or of a comic book that are worth talking about on the big screen if you get to them. You don't have to make that the whole like format. Just do it in some small capacity, which is what this show did. And I commend Sandman for doing that. I commend it even more. And I honestly commend Netflix for having the balls to just step back and be like, okay, here's a bonus one. Because that seems so out of left field for Netflix to be like additional content we could have held off on until you were ready to pay us more. I like it. So two short stories that are stories in the Sandman mythos. The first one being Dream of a Thousand Cats. This is the first animated segment in this universe. And it is probably one of the coolest concepts they've done on the screen yet. I really like seeing this one executed perfectly. The animation is a beautiful mix of like photorealism and just computer generated beaut beautifulness. That was a bad way to put it, but you know what I mean. It looks spectacular. The cats move great. I love the way the voices sound and the way they talk. I love the way they presented this one. It's kind of like, let's all go meet the crazy elderly lady that's just talking nonsense about everything we're working on. And then we show up there and it's Sandra Oh, and we're like, oh, this is cool. It was a visual treat. And as somebody who is a fan of cats, as you can see here, well, I put a picture of my cats up on the screen. You can just tell this was a love letter to that issue. The people involved in this knew how to make these cats look cool, knew how to make it fun. Dream of a Thousand Cats, a really cool issue that just dealt with something you don't normally see in this kind of story and made it worthwhile, which is kind of a cool thing to see. And then there's Calliope, which is a big thing on itself. And I kind of talked about this already doing the live stream. I want to clear up a couple like just things I said on there. There is a significant change to the Calliope story where she is this like trapped muse for this writer and he has to get her to do things for him. They make a simple change from the book where she is still the she is still the victim, which is something I kind of mumbled my words on talking about it the first time. She is still a victim, but this time she is able to fight back from the shackles and try to be more than the victim. She tries to just fight back, and that gives her more depth than just waiting for Morpheus to arrive. It is a smart change that this book did, and I think it helps make this episode a little more special. Personally, I do like the stuff with the cats a little bit more just because it's really fun and cute. But this is a really smart story that just shows you like 
how writers can be terrible sometimes. They are the masters of their own domain, the ultimate bringers of their own demise. That is the theme that we are talking about in this episode. And I like to see it. It kind of becomes this brokenhearted romance story between Calliope and Morpheus. And he is like, do you want my help? Should I help you? I'm going to help you. I understand what these humans do to us when we are in these positions. And how he learns to move away from that is a very compelling story. And you just see it's tragic in a way for the writer. And maybe this is just because I do a lot of writing and you just see like that broken promise where you are supposed to be doing something poetic and important but the words can't come out and that's kind of tragic i'm not trying to like sympathize with the guy but you can definitely see like neil gaiman writes about writers and when a writer writes about writing you either get the most incestuous story ever written where it's just jerking yourself off or you get something so contemplative and destructive that it's like crying in your sleep and i think this toys the line between both pretty well calliope became a very fascinating character to study. I think they did some really good stuff with that. And just having that be like the companion piece to this, I think works really well. Because again, there is stuff to explore in both of those stories. If you wanted to do an entire movie about them, you probably could. But the fact that they just had like the know-how to be like, we can't sustain an entire arc about that story. It is compelling and unique, but what more can we really say than what's already been said in the one issue that is about this concept? We'll just commit to that concept for the time allotted to it, and we don't really have to do anything else with that, which I respect, I believe is important, and that's all you gotta do. So this is a fun episode of The Sandman. It goes into some very interesting themes, some very dark themes. It kind of, Calliope at least, is presented a little bit better than it is in the comic book, which is a huge change that is very important and I think works really well for the story. But this is the thing. I hope more comic book shows just take this as like a, oh, we could just do it easily? Like, we don't have to dedicate 40 minutes to a concept. 20? That's awesome. I hope more of them try to do that. I really do, because... It just works a little better and a little more smooth. So, my friends, that is going to do it for this episode of Episode of the Month. Stay tuned next month when we probably talk about a Lord of the Rings episode. But who's to say? So, thank you guys for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. And as always, I will catch you in the next one. Have fun, stay safe, good luck.